David, welcome to Edinburgh. You brought the sunshine with you from the south, I'm glad to say, which is entirely appropriate, coming from Tata. And we're absolutely delighted that uh, you've come to talk about Tata Group for the next 150 years, what the future looks like, uh, at the University of Edinburgh a little bit later today. So thank you for doing that. And I, I wondered if I could just start off by asking you this question, because you moved from a very distinguished career in, in the diplomatic service of our country to a very important commercial job. How did you find the, the transition? Well, um, first of all, thank you very much for the, for the welcome and the introduction. It's great to be here in Edinburgh. I don't get up as often as I would no. like, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't get up necessarily in proportion to Tata's interest in mm -hmm. Scotland. Mm -hmm. um, but it's great to be here and great to uh, be a guest of the Asia Scotland Institute. Thank you. Um, so for me, um, this is clearly a very different uh, departure from my previous yeah. career. Yeah. The, the language, the numbers of business and the language and numbers, if there are any numbers in diplomacy, are very different. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but people are people. Yeah. And I think one of the most important things, uh, whether you're working in government, whether you're working in business, whether you're working in a university indeed, is uh, the relationships yeah. and the seeing how things can uh, work better mm. by building those relationships. In our case, between uh, Tata with its various businesses headquartered in India yeah. and very substantial investments in uh, Europe, particularly uh, in the UK. Uh, and so I hope that I bring something to, uh, to, to Tata uh, with that experience. Of course, uh, I'm not somebody who runs uh, a car company or a steel company, but there's a lot more to uh, being uh, what I call part of the furniture, which yeah. is how Tata likes to see itself in the UK. I was very interested too that, that like, you, you in an interview you said that you've gone and written certain, read certain books like Candy and others as you made that transition. And I think one of the takeaways was that it's, it's, it's a good thing to study the states and learn from them. In other words, not to assume that everything can be done perfectly. I, well, I, we all know none of us uh, is uh, perfect. Uh, perhaps it helps uh, when you move from one world into another world uh, and you see things a little bit from the outside. Mm -hmm. I mean, we talk a lot uh, these days, uh, rightly, about diversity, whether it's in businesses yes. or in uh, governments, in, uni in universities, wherever. And part of that is people coming with a different yep. perception. Um, I sometimes say that you don't need on a board just people who know things. You need people who don't know things, people who can ask the stupid question. One hopes in an intelligent way. I hope my stupid questions are intelligent, not stupid questions. Good. I remember Ratan Tata telling me that you know, Tata should not be described as an Indian company, but a global company now. Uh, and you have responsibility for a very sizable part of those assets, of which, as you said, there are a lot of people in Scotland with TCS, Tata Consulting, um, and they will no doubt be coming to the uh, event this evening as well. So in this diverse portfolio of uh, products and services, do you occasionally feel that you're the moment sitting in the middle of the perfect storm? with the comments from, obviously, the Trump administration most recently, but since you arrived in post, the, the whole Brexit decision, both of which must be potentially very impactful for your businesses. Well, you mentioned uh, Tata in the next 150 years. Of course, Tata is celebrating its 150th anniversary this year. If you think back to Tata, Jamshedji Tata, the founder, mm. in India in 1868, yes. just how much has changed? in India, in the UK, in the world since then, yeah. how many changes the group has lived through. Mm. And, and certainly there are a, a lot of challenges for business globally yeah. uh, right now. Uh, we clearly uh, need a, uh, an outcome uh, for Brexit uh, which uh, enables our businesses to continue and to thrive. Yes. Uh, global uh, trade is a good thing. It's, it's not just a good thing for Tata, it's a good thing for the countries in which Tata has invested yes. in, which, yes. uh, which benefit from trade. Um, but these are challenges which, uh, if you look at, I think, in the, in the perspective of a business like Tata, operating already over 150 years with a long-term perspective, uh, you still stick to your values and you still look to uh, how you can uh, make those businesses continue and thrive. So. Uh, plenty of work to do, yeah. uh, no question, yeah. uh, but I think just as you have to be very flexible and adapt to change, you have to preserve your core values too. 
So it's in the DNA of the group, dealing with change, dealing with challenges of the sort, you would say. Well, I think, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a saying about um, if you want things to stay the same, uh, they have to change. Yes, yes. Uh, and you do have, if you want your core values to stay the same, you have to be uh, agile and responsive yes. to, 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 to change uh, and thrive on it. My last really question is this, is that, that, that our mission is to educate and inspire tomorrow's leaders here in Scotland to re-engage with Asia. What would your advice be to young people, and there will be a number of younger people in the audience tonight, about the future of Asia and the importance of engaging with it? Well, um, there is no doubt that we are only at the beginning of what is going to be a kind of Asian century, an Asian age, and we can't possibly know yet what implications that will have in its entirety. But it's absolutely clear to me that young people today will see a huge amount of that yeah. in their lifetimes. Yeah. When I was uh, at school and university, um, uh, some of my uh, brighter uh, colleagues yeah. aspired to go into the States uh, for their education or to work because they thought that was going to be a pinnacle of development. Mm. Um, it's been great to see through a scheme that uh, Tyler Consultancy Services has run with the British Council, mm. there have been some young people who've gone to India yeah. to learn, uh, not, not to go involved in, te in development programmes, but to learn about a modern tech business, TCS. Yeah. And I think it's, it's a really exciting thought that in the future, uh, young people from uh, Scotland will think about going to India or going elsewhere in Asia uh, as part of their education to learn the latest uh, and to make sure they're at the state of the art. So um, absolutely, it's an opportunity. So not so much go west, young man, but go east, young person. Go east, go east. Great. Well, thank you for being with us. Thanks for coming up. We look forward very much to hearing what you have to say later on today. Thank you for your hospitality. Thank you very much.